tonight we are cracking the code to escape common AAC or augmentative and alternative commu communication traps. So any kinds of mistakes we've made along the way, we're trying to help um, educate our uh, friends and family of AAC about that. So you all will get a chance to help us um, escape some of these traps. So we will need a little bit of participation from you if you're able to. Again, you can always put things in the chat or shout it out, even if your um, camera is off. We don't mind a loud background. <laughs> We're all used to it. Um, and this is a safe space, like we said. So um, you'll get clues tonight to crack this code. And to help us crack the code, we have this guide. Um, one of my very favorite is from Lauren Enders. It's a it's a graphic, um, an AAC boot camp that she just updated in this last year. And so as we go through, we'll we'll be um, giving you a trap that we'll explain, and then we'll have um, a clue that will help you escape that trap. Um, if you're not able to open it up right now. All right. Um, I'll wait for it. Hi, Mr. Morris. We're so glad you got to join us. I just want to let you know we're doing kind of an escape room, so it's a little different tonight, but um, just jump in right along. Uh, we're glad you're here. Um, the first trap that we have for tonight are common AAC mistakes or mishaps is only using our AAC device or our user's AAC device during snack time. So the snack time trap. Um, and often this is for making requests. So I might give a kid a goldfish and they might say more. And then I give them another goldfish and they might say more or they might go to goldfish and say goldfish and they have to say it over and over and over again in order to enjoy their trap. And so we see, I'll tell you what we see. So here is our clue to get out of that trap. So you're gonna look for this clue. So if you have your guide open, yeah, you're gonna be looking for the clue. Hmm, and what number is it? So shout it out if you see it, or if you want to put it in the chat. Got it, got that. Oh, hang ah. on. Ding, 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 number seven. Um, Kate got it on number seven. So we escape that snack time trap um, by teaching all of the different reasons we communicate and modeling all of those different reasons we communicate with our students. Um, and I know I'm guilty of often saying, oh, what's really motivating? It's food. Let's start there. Um, but then we can get stuck there. So we want to be sure that we are also modeling for other reasons that are important for our students and modeling for different communication um, functions for our students. So um, yeah, just showing them that their voice is powerful and can be used in many different ways beyond making requests. And I love this quote here, how it says, when you're ready, I'm, you know, we're going to be using all of those different functions. So your student or your learner might not be ready yet to do, you know, requests, commenting, answering questions, but that's okay. Because even when we're talking to little babies, we're modeling all those different ways of speaking all throughout their development. So that's what we want to be doing for our learners with AAC. We want to be modeling all those different ways of speaking on their AAC device, not just requests only at first. So even if that's where they are, that we might be seeing them only use requests, and that's great. But we, as their team, are going to be showing them a lot of different ways to communicate. So our crack the code for our first letter. Kate said number seven. Seven, here it is on our guide. So what letter? Hmm. B. <laughs> B, okay, so our first letter is B. You got it. Room one, <laughs> okay. okay, the not really using it, right? We've seen this um, and 
Cece picked out this picture, so she might have to describe this one a little more. I wasn't with her, but I'm thinking maybe the device was being used for Cocoa Melon with the volume up, YouTube. Maybe it's they're eating with it. There's some food. Um, and so don't, I mean, we've been there too, right? We're assuming if they're not yet using the AAC system, then they're not going to use it. Maybe they never will use it. It's not a good fit. Um, so this is one of our traps. We've been there. So how can we escape? So here's mm. your clue. It looks like a time or a, what's it called? Sand timer kind of thing. So we're going to look for that on our guide. So 10? Yeah. On the photo pass. We just saw it right there at the very bottom, number 10. Okay. So our escape from the not using it yet trap is giving language time, right? We talk to babies for um, a typical developing babies for an entire year. And we typically hear that first word, mama, 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 or dada <laughs> at my house. Um, my kids also said ball, car, and dog. Um, really important things. And it, took a, it takes a long time. So if they're learning that new language system, it takes a long time. We love this visual here from um, Kate McLaughlin, the AAC coach, and all of these are linked at the end of the slides. Um, so you can have these links later. Um, it's a marathon, not a sprint. And I love that part on the bottom, like barriers are going to come up, um, of course. And so if as they come up, you know, really calling that team meeting and that staffing as a team to talk about what does that modeling look like? What does our implementation look like? Because um, like what she says here, it's probably not the system and it's definitely not the kid, um, but let's look at how we're modeling with that system. Let's look at how we're using, using that system. Is it meaningful for this kid? Is it motivating? Um, and are we giving enough um, explicit instruction on how to use that communication system um, before we give up? So don't give up. <laughs> Everyone deserves a voice. And it takes time. And it takes time. So Kate said number 10, or I think it was Kate. I don't know who it was. What letter are we looking for? R. R. Thanks, Kate. Give me an R. <laughs> we have our R up there now. Okay. We will continue. Okay. Our next trap. It's my turn, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> our next trap is the boring questions trap. So trying to teach language using boring activities. This is a sign for boring if nobody knows. And I, I love that sign. I think it's so perfect, <laughs> just boring. Um, testing, right? Ask or asking a lot of questions. And I have been there, I have done this. I. Definitely, this has been one of the traps I have fallen in, and I bet a lot of other SLPs could say the same thing. So let's see what helps us get out of this trap. Four. Oh, she already found it. I didn't even Ooh. go up there. Katie's okay, using her are. guide. Way to go. <laughs> Number four. Number four. <laughs> Let's look at number four. Okay, how do we escape the boring question trap? We can interact instead of testing. Yes, I love that. And I think she's gonna pull up some info from the AAC coach where she says, if you already know the answer to the question, don't ask it. Um, and, and I think another suggestion the AAC coach gave was, if I wouldn't ask this to my verbal or typically developing verbal um, kiddo, then I shouldn't be asking this question to this student. And I know sometimes we do tend to target that personal information, but can we do it in a meaningful way? Can we do it in a different way? And can we ensure that that's not the only thing we're doing with the communication system? Because we communicate for so many more and 
so so much um, more fun reasons. Um, and I think, I don't know if it was in our last one, CC, but we talked a lot about our goal to be connecting with our kiddos and our AAC communicators and using that communication system as a way to connect. And so if we're thinking about that positive interaction and connection, I think we're not going to ask as many questions um, because we're going to maybe just, you know, talk, talk to them about um, things they could say, or, and if they don't respond, that's okay. Show them maybe what they could say, or right. what you think we, they might want to say. We don't want this to be work. Now it is work. It is hard, right? And if, if it wasn't, you know, we wouldn't need this device. And so we've got to make um, things really fun and really motivating and really exciting to communicate. Um, so that way we can get to a little bit harder stuff maybe as well, but we've got to make things fun. Um, again, when we're thinking about those little babies um, we're oh, so excited that they're saying those words, right? Again, we've got to bring that excitement and joy. Um, somebody who's one of the founders of one of the apps we use a lot, Lampworks for Life, um, he talks about where's the joy, find that joy and how we can connect with our learners. And I love that. All right, our next, oh, so what, what letter are we looking for for number four? Although I already know the answer to the question. Ooh, I think Katie <laughs> got it. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, let's see our next trap. We are cracking the code. Okay, the not enough words trap. Okay, okay, starting with two little vocabulary. So we may have seen this. I think that language system just had some drink choices, maybe two food choices. I've definitely yeah. fallen into this trap before. Yep. All right, here's your clue. Looks like two different communication systems. Let's see where it could be on our guide. Anybody? Oh no, we're not, we're never gonna one. escape this one. <gasps> this is probably actually the easiest escape room you've been a part of. They're hard. <laughs> I'll use the one that I did with my daughter. I was like, this is really hard. <laughs> I've heard they're really hard. I've never done one. It's also really fun, but it was hard. Okay, so number five. Good job. Number five. Oh, I'm sorry. I jumped ahead. It's not like you got it. Yeah, that was it. Number five. It should go back though. Okay, so number five is providing a robust core based vocabulary from the start. So you might hear that word, is your vocabulary system robust? So um, robust, of course, the word itself just means expansive, right? But in the world for AAC, it means all the tools that we need, um, a balance of core words, those words that we use 80% of the time, and fringe words, those other 20% words that we use. Um, and the alphabet, um, other suggestions have been, does it have access to um, predictive text when we're using the alphabet? Does it have access to some phrase-based words that we might need for common um, fast uh, communication? What am I missing? No, I feel like you got it all. And the one thing that will help is if, if you look at that communication system and you think, okay, oh. what will my adult, maybe your kiddo is really young right now. And so and we're not really thinking about what they might be using as an adult, or maybe we're expecting that they will be verbal communicators, but they may still need some AAC support. Would this get them what they need in their adult life? Can we think with the end in mind? So this adult AAC communicator, what would they need to have? Can we start teaching that now? Now, so that they have that motor planning, they have all of the access to everything they need, and we're modeling access to all of those things um, from the start. That was the other thing. Robust also is taking into mind motor planning, so that way we're making sure that things are staying in the same place. We're not moving pictures around, um, so that way we're really able to learn where those things are, um, and so we wouldn't be changing a grid size, you know, as they're learning going from larger pictures to smaller pictures. We're really making sure that we're, like we said, beginning with the end in mind and working with um, 
best that we can capture all of the, that student's abilities. All right, so. Hmm, I don't know. I can't remember the number. I need help. I, I almost couldn't remember the number, but then I thought, oh, I know what it says. <laughs> Okay, so our next five, one is five. A. It's a, right? Awesome. Uh, yes. You're getting so close, y'all. Our next trap. Oh, the next but I do trap love this is, bear. Use your words, kids. Use your words, emergent communicators. Oh, this breaks our heart because if they could, they would, right? And so we have to really remember that it's um it's a trap and it's um a trap that we're trying to avoid. I have done it. I totally have done this trap. I've said this phrase, um, but it's something that we are trying to shift away from and trying to use some other strategies that we feel like might be a little bit more motivating other than that phrase, okay, use your words. Um, so let's see what it could get us out of this trap. All right, got a blue case we're looking for here. Let's see. All right, I'll Are we on in. two? It's Are we on two? two? We're going to model, 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 model AAC, right? So Cece said, if they could, they would. And so what we do, and, and we don't always know what it is they want to say, but we can model what we think it is that they want to say. We could say, hmm, maybe you want to say and, and model that for them. We could, we could give them choices. Do you want milk or juice? Or um, it looks like you're frustrated. Are you telling me you're all done? So we can show them. I like these alternatives. Like they're very specific here. So I'm going to read some of them so that, um, cause these were really good. So you can model. Yep. I'm all done. Model. Give me, give, they want something, give me and what it is that they want. Offer choices. I like the pause and wait. Maybe we're just not providing enough wait time there for them to show us or tell us using their AAC or their gestures or what the way that they are communicating with you. Um, can you tell me in a different way? I like that one. Um, show me, right? Take me to that thing or what is it? Um, sometimes I tell my little one, I, oh, I hear you, especially if she's like, screaming at me, but not able to communicate those words, then I hear that you're frustrated. I hear that you want something, but mommy does not know. So <laughs> giving those choices or really trying to interpret that behavior, if we can, in a way that honors that they want to be able to tell you, but maybe they can't in that time. Um, and then uh, CC added on five keys to great AAC modeling. I'll let you go over that one. Yeah, well, I just want to say I love that this one over here on the right side, it was from not anything to do with AAC. This is from yeah. just like a great parenting Instagrammer that we found. And I just love that this is, these are tools that we can use in our toolbox with all of our kiddos. Um, so, you know, Kelly talking about her girls and even my kiddos who are a little bit older at home. Um, you know, these are great things that we can do with all of our kiddos. So I just, I love that that, um, that really relates to, you know, all of us as parents. I think all of us are parents on here. Oh, almost all of us. Okay. Um, so these other things are to do more with AAC modeling. Um, just do it. I love that. I tell people that all the time, just touch the buttons. It's okay if you mess up or get, you know, confused or lost, you know, it's, it's a new language, right? Um, that's okay. Um, you know, learning it a bit by bit, just like you've learned the keyboard bit by bit, right? If you look at that keyboard for the first time, it's a lot of buttons, right? But we learned it, right? By repetition, by doing it over and over. And eventually we learned that whole keyboard if you are, you know, um, a typer, <laughs> which most of us are nowadays. Um, again, we started with core words. Um, we want to make it fun and motivating, like we said. And of course, don't quit. Right. Yeah. And I see Heather was saying, I say, use your words to remind them to get 
to remind him to get his device um, or to get his words. And so I think what you'll see, we're going to get to another escape in a minute. And it, I think it um, will show us the prompt hierarchy. And I think that would be great to use. It sounds so technical, but the one we did tonight isn't as, as big as the umbrella one. So we'll show you in just a minute some things that you could say maybe instead of use your words, um, but that would still allow um, you that prompting that he needs to use his communication system. So we'll show you that in just a minute. I think that'll be helpful. All right, so our next one, it was number two. So it was T. Okay. The over helping trap. Um, yeah, so um, jumping in, yes, jumping in too soon to help or over prompt. I'm so guilty of this. It's, it can be really hard to give that wait time that's needed um, for our students to think about what what do I need to say? What should I say? What do I want to say? And then find where that is on their communication system. Um, and so, and I think as parents, it's natural for us to want to help our kiddos. And so we think we're, we're helping and in some ways we might be, but uh, in the long run, we want to give them that wait time to build that independence. Okay, so here's our clue to escape that trap. We, Looks like a triangle with some colors around it. Let's dun, dun. three, three. <laughs> All right. So our escape from prompting is use caution when prompting, right? Um, I love the acronym WAIT. Why am I talking? <laughs> a professor <laughs> taught me that one time and I was like, that is so great. Why am I talking? Um, why am I prompting in this situation? So here is a great um, little pr uh, post again from AAC Coach. Um, she talks about using that least and most hierarchy. We talked about the prompt hierarchy last um, month, but we're happy to share that again. But here's just another one that um, is a little different. So that wait time, 15 to 30 seconds, indirect or less direct verbal models. So Heather, we could say, maybe you have something to tell me instead of get your words, right? Or get your device or tell me on your talker. Maybe you have something to say right now, or it sounds like, um, or even pointing to the talker, right? Saying get your talker or just going, that pointing is less direct than me verbalizing, right? Um, pointing to the device or your talker might help me understand. I love that phrase. That's a great phrase. Um, or mod and then uh, that highest one, modeling two to three options that may meet the need, imitation not required. So other even, you know, um, if your kiddo is maybe gesturing or maybe pointing to something and they're still not getting their talker after you said your talker might help me understand, you know, you could then model, oh, do you want, you know, milk or juice like Kelly was saying or um, something that, you know, you might be interpreting from what they're, um, what he's doing. Um, so again, moving your way from those most to least prompts. And again, um, meeting your kiddo where they're at. If you know they're always gonna be needing that model right away, then maybe we're starting with modeling first and then we're kind of slowly going down that prompt hierarchy so that way we're really trying to make sure that we're always um, going to that least amount of prompting that they need. But again, you guys know your kiddos best and our SLPs know our kiddos because they're working with them. So, you know, meeting them where they're at with their needs. Um, but always trying to remember that we're going from that least to most prompting. Pointed out that she liked this visual and I really do too. I feel like it's less um, overwhelming than the umbrella prompt hierarchy we went through last week, which has a lot of words. This to me, I'm like, okay, wait time, indirect cue, direct cue, model. Like this feels really manageable. So yeah, that's great. I like that. Yes. And of and course, we're always, we want to be modeling all, always. I think that's our other hierarchy had modeling maybe first, but mm -hmm. knowing that we can't expect the student to use the communication system for something that we've never modeled. Yes. 
So, Great. oh man, you guys are so smart. Okay, <laughs> nothing to talk about trap. Um, here, Julie Andrews is with me and Kelly's, two, two of me and Kelly's favorite things. Chick-fil-A waffle fries and an ice latte. These are a few of my favorite things. <laughs> if, if it was our communication devices, we would definitely have those things, not just French fries, but like Chick-fil-A waffle fries programmed in our device. Um, and definitely ice lattes. So we want to make sure um, a trap is not having the AAC communicators' favorite people, places, and things in their system. So what is our clue to get out of this trap? Okay. Oh, there it is. Number eight. Personalize AAC systems. We can escape that trap by personalizing, customizing, um, and don't feel like you have to know how to do all that on your own. Um, we have a team in Leander that can help with that. We have SLPs who might be trained, and if not, they know they can contact us at any time, and we want to help teach um, teach and help customize communication systems so that they have students' favorite things. So we want them to have their, their family and family's names and classmates and pets and all those things that we love to talk about and we know that they want to talk about, we want to have available to them. It's part of that robust communication um, system. So special topics of interests. Um, we can even, on all of the communication systems we're using currently, we can take actual pictures of things or people. So um, that is something we want to ensure that we're doing um, and making that communication system really um, fun and what it and what and and functional for our AAC communicators. Yeah. So Kate just brought up a great question asking about um, just with motor planning. You know, if my kiddos don't play with the same toys at eight, nine, and 13 that they did when they were two, three, and, you know, seven. So what, how do you balance that out, especially when we only have so much real estate on a AAC device? Um, I think it's a loaded question. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I definitely want to make sure that I do have their favorite things on there. If they have 12 favorite things, you know, we might have to um, pick a couple um, and really make sure that we have um, maybe some other ways to talk about those other favorite things, maybe some light text ways, um, but also teaching around those things. We call that descriptive teaching. So um, maybe if I am talking about Daniel Tiger, maybe I'm using the word, you know, um, tiger and toy, right? And those things are already built into my communication device. So I don't even need to take up a button for that. Um, um, but maybe Mr. Rogers is not, I don't know, you know, I'm trying to think around things. Um, but, you know, we definitely want to make sure um, our communication systems can grow with us. And so we want to make sure that when we're adding things, that they are things that are super motivating, that they're relevant, that they're going to give us that social communication. So if, um, my Daniel Tiger is going to get me talking with my friends. And yeah, I want to add that in there because that's their favorite thing too. And then that gives us something to talk about. Um, but if it's maybe um, uh, weather, I just looked at this umbrella here and, and it's evaporation and condensation and, and maybe the, the water cycle, that might not get me talking with my friends as much as, you know, um, adding in a button about my favorite toy. So, you know, we want to balance out adding in words with things that are going to be motivating, meaningful, socially, um, you know, help us communicate, and then also that are going to be repeated over and over. Um, while balancing out, we're going to be teaching how to talk about those things, maybe um, using that descriptive te teaching piece. Does that make sense, Kate? Oh, yeah. It does. Tiger Thank you. Like <laughs> and yes, Daniel of course, Tiger Daniel would, would make the cut. Make the cut. <laughs> and I, I also think, you know, we talk about that motor planning piece being so important, but 
as they get older, if they've, if they've learned to go to, you know, TV, Daniel Tiger, and now we've run out of room when they're older to add in their new favorite shows, maybe that Daniel Tiger is no longer the favorite TV show and a favorite TV show could replace where Daniel Tiger is. So they're still, they still know the pathway to go TV and favorite TV show. And now that favorite TV show is not Daniel, but something else, or maybe they still want to be able to talk about Daniel Tiger. Um, Mm -hmm. Even they say, I used to love it, or it used to be my favorite. So it's a balancing act for sure. And the real estate is slim. So we just have to be um, really mindful about using it to um, using it in the best way we can. Mm -hmm. And again, also using those light tech ways, you know, if we are able to um, have I, I know there's a teacher that I go into her room and I see, you know, 20 different songs on YouTube that she has printed out and pictures, you know, that the kids can choose from. That's such a great way to use light tech versus programming in each and every song. Um, Cause those could change next year and maybe she doesn't use those songs anymore. So that's a great way to incorporate, you know, that multi-modality piece where we talk about different ways to communicate um, Yes. And that communicator could just say, play music, not that one, different song like that Mm -hmm. one. So there's a lot of other ways um, to communicate the song that they want, even if it's not the specific. Our last letter is E. So um, we would love for you to read that poem here. Or do we have it on the next one? It is on the next one. Okay. This poem, Kathy, I can't read that last name, but, um, Kathy M maybe or H. I, think we I love this. It, so we're good. Yeah. Breathing is the only prerequisite that is relevant to communication. Breathing equals life. I love that. And life equals communication. It is that simple. Um, so there's a lot of things that we could teach you and that we could tell you, but of course, as parents and as educators, we want you to just breathe. <laughs> um with our with our emergent communicators with AAC um and of course keep these things in mind as you go about your day so um we're here with you and we we are so proud of everyone that's you know taking on this journey so congratulations you did it we escaped (laughs) So here's all of the resources we used today. Um, they're all linked and I'll send them also in the follow-up email if you're busy and cooking. We would love to chat. We've got about 15 minutes. We went a little long tonight with our fun escape room. 